So a couple days ago, I went up to feed the pigs and I fed them uh, in the afternoon. And typically when I pour out the grain for them for, for their feed for the day, it's not uncommon for them to kind of bump each other a little bit as they're nuzzling around looking for the grain and eating. They don't usually like smack each other very hard or anything and they just kind of root, throw their head at each other to kind of push them away to get at the stuff they're after. So I had fed them and I noticed one pig got bumped by one of the large sows and he got hit kind of hard it looked which was uncharacteristic, but where he was at, he was, I think he got hit between the sow hitting him and a, the, the rail tie fence post. And after a minute, he went and laid down and then he came to and was up and about and good. And I watched him carefully for the next hour or two. And then I came back and checked on him periodically and he was up and about and, and browsing and everything and doing fine. The next day he was doing fine, everything was great. Everybody's up and about, and he was doing really good. And when I came up to feed, it was about 8.30 at night when I fed, and then went around the quarter to the new hydrant and grabbed the hose, turned that on to come over and, and water up their trough. And as I got over there to water the trough, I noticed this little pig laying over to the side out of the way again. When they were all standing just a moment before, they were all standing right there at the feed that I had just thrown out. So I started watering and I went in, to check on him, you know, try to rouse him and get him stimulated. And he'd shake his head a couple of times, kick his feet and then whatever. But pretty soon he just stopped responding completely and went completely unresponsive and died. Here I am, it's 8.45 at night by this point, And I'm like, what in the heck am I gonna do? We can't just waste the animal and we can't lose that life unresponsibly. So we go, we've got to try to salvage the meat. I obviously don't have my processing kitchen finished yet but you gotta get creative. And I've processed many deer and wild game. A lot of times I've had to do that hanging from the tree in the backyard, and various things like that. So at nine o'clock at night, I brought the pig down here to the shop and I hung it from the excavator and proceeded to scald and scrape and gut and have the pig so that it could hang overnight. I've never butchered a pig before. This is our first go around with pigs. So they've been in the cooler chilled for 24 hours down to 30, about, I just checked it and they're like 32, 34. I'm gonna go ahead and get started cutting them, um, breaking down these parts into sections and then I'm gonna get the hams and the bacon sides salted good today so that we can get them uh, in the meat tubs and in the fridge to lay in the salted to cure out for a couple of days and then we'll put them on the smoker and smoke it and try to get them down to a good cure before we slice and store it. I'm gonna do boneless chops with the loin cuts and we're just gonna pack and wrap those. The shoulder, most of the front shoulders, I'm gonna go ahead and put a lot of that into the grind pile to go into breakfast sausage. I usually make a, an herb-like breakfast sausage. And then we're also gonna make up some beer brats. And then I also save the liver and heart and we're gonna make some liverwurst. I'd just gotten started cutting the meat pretty good when I got a surprise visit from my folks. So they came in and sat down to watch me cut while we had a nice little visit. Because I was harvesting this pig today, it actually sparked quite a conversation about food. Specifically about the comparisons between each of our own childhood memories and experiences as it centered around food and sustenance. My father was raised in rural eastern Idaho and my mother in rural northern Wyoming, both during the Great Depression era. They raised me in southern rural Idaho during the 1980s and Ola's family raised her in a small town outside of Vilnius, Lithuania during the 1980s until the collapse of the Soviet Union, at which point they migrated to the United States. The vast differences in each of our upbringings made for quite a comparison. Did you guys eat much meat growing up? Uh, when I was at home, when I was nine, yeah, up until age nine, no, right. Uh, it was seldom that I ever got meat unless I killed a bird and cooked it. Uh, I, 
We didn't get meat. You guys didn't eat very much meat, even as a household, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, they always had meat, but, but the kids, but kids didn't. The kids did. Just I had, that. I had oatmeal group. That was my primary. Every once in a while, we get beans. So that was if uh, if if they could gather up enough of them, but put them in people's pockets and cook them. And every once in a while, we get macaroni. And generally, that was if somebody donated. A food bar. Gotcha. And then we get the bean kids. But after I left there, my uh, when I was at uh, Aunt Mary's, I I don't remember what all we ate, but it was uh, we had uh, potatoes were pretty staple item for us. Potatoes around. Did you grow up even? And before you left, was that did you eat a lot of in, in season produce garden? Stuff like that was other, otherwise? No. I, you guys didn't have much of a garden? Oh, no, we had a big garden, but big we garden. weren't allowed to eat. You wouldn't eat a, you sell it or what would you do with it? No. Mom canned it, and that was the staple for for Johnny and Alvin and uh, Mom and Dad. Those were the four people that ate in the garden. Uh, and they'd have uh, corn on the cob, and they'd have canned beans, and all of the staples, and she canned them. And, but, but like I say, we, I, I never can remember, oh, I do do, I, I remember we had a goose one year. I killed a goose with my flipper. This was your farm goose, or was it a lot of this? It was wild, a lot of this. And so we had goops, I remember that. And because you, you killed it, you were able to get some? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, but we didn't, and he went hunting every year, got elk and deer and, and that, but uh, we, we didn't get it. You guys didn't, the you younger know, didn't. We were so spoiled. We, you know, we had our own beef. We had our Pigs, we had our chicken, we had our, you know. All stuff you raised. Yeah, and then they'd go hunting and they'd have deer. And, yeah, we were really. The meat was fine for you guys. It was yeah, pretty fine. Mom had always been a very big garden, so we had a can hat, so we'd have, yeah, we ate the game. Olga and I were talking about it earlier today. She was talking about when she was younger in Lithuania, and they would go to her grandparents' place, their Dutch, their Dutch, she calls it, and, and it was a couple of acres of ground. There was no grass, there was no lawn, they didn't have grass. Every bit of property that wasn't a walking path or a building was yeah. garden, yeah. flower or vegetable, and orchard and berries and things like that. She doesn't remember eating meat very often at all. And when it was, they'd have to go to the shop, the Wouldn't dairy shop. dairy shop, I guess is how she kind of calls it, because it was the same shop for the butcher cuts and the butter and uh, milk and eggs. It was all out of that same shop. And that was the only time they got meat, is if they went and got it. They just didn't eat very much meat because it was expensive, and they didn't have access to it. They couldn't raise any large animals. No. Her grandfather would raise rabbits, no. and she can't remember whether they would outright eat the rabbit or whether he would sell rabbit meat. Well, I, I ate rabbit because I could kill them. Yeah, we ate right. rabbit too, we ate this. I, and it was always a jack or a cottontail. Right. It was not a uh, raised rabbit. You know. Yeah, it wasn't wasn't far. Yeah. And we had uh, we had a sheep and a goat, and, and but they were pets more than anything else, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had sheep and goats too, but I don't ever really remember eating. No, 
Did you know? So Did you know. always know what made you read? No, maybe not. We lived on the edge of the desert. And because we lived on the edge of the desert, uh, the sheep herders would come through there and we'd get a bum lamb every once in a while. Mm -hmm. And so we had three or four sheep uh, that were just there, you know. Would you sell them when they got up to size? No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, my uncle would come in and, and he'd uh, shear them once a year, and at the same time he'd shear us. <laughs> and uh, so we got our hair cut <laughs> once a year. And uh, so, like I said, I, I never had meat until I went to Aunt Mary's. My, I, I wasn't a, a staple that day. No, ours wasn't either because I really did not learn how to cook meat. Really? No. So, no. So I'm not sure what the deal was. Is it not even stews or soups or anything like that? Do you remember? I learned how to cook potatoes. <laughs> that, uh, so I'm not sure what the deal was. Hmm. And I'm sure the other kids, some of the, my brothers and sisters, have got different memories of it. Because when there's 10 in your family, and you're all at home, yeah. uh, food's a little bit gone before you hardly sit out. I do remember when I came up to visit, and it was my birthday, Mom, fried chicken for me. We had fried chicken and mashed potatoes and gravy. Those were my favorite foods at that time. It must have been a treat when we did it that way because yeah. I still remember liking those too. Mm -hmm. The fried chicken and the mashed potatoes. I think we would always have a, a special meal on Sunday because Sunday, lots of times I was eager to invite my friends over. Over for Sunday dinner? To be with us, you know. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. mm -hmm. For me growing up, and I remember times, many times, looking through the covers and just seeing nothing. Nothing. Fridge is empty, covers are empty, and then come six o'clock, there's a four course meal on the table. I don't know where the hell it came from. <laughs> Those things that were in those covers that you didn't recognize as put together as a meal, probably. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because a lot of times, like, and, and then I think back about those meals, right? I remember one of the classic staple meals that we had was hamburger gravy on boiled potatoes. I used to. I'm not going to see that in the kitchen anywhere. Because, yeah, you know, that's true, that's true. You know. And and tacos, that was one of the menus that we'd have, and spaghetti. Mm -hmm. I mean, these were a weekly. Yeah. yeah, but I always remember the pantry being full, full jar, jar of food, all kinds of stuff. Sure. And I remember having full open access to whatever was going in the garden. If you were hungry, go find it. Go pick it and eat it. If there's carrots, eat it. Just don't waste it. Don't you dare get caught wasting right. it. Right. Yeah. And I remember that very vividly. And in fact, we raised the kids with the same, under that same pretense. We would go down to the river bottom and eat currants galore. Right. You know? Because there was currants there, bullberries, and things like that, and gooseberries, and Oh, Gooseberries and currants. And yeah, whatever. so we could, you know, just going down there and eating that stuff. And it well, might be real good for you. Before you come around, we had liverwurst. Yeah, Mom and I were talking about that. We were talking about some liverwurst things and stuff. And, and we never had organ meats growing up. I never remember eating any kind of organ meat. Mm -hmm. Never had liver, never had heart, never you had. Kidneys, any of that. Never had any kind of organ meat or well, organ meat preparation. You could get liver at 13 cents a pound, and if you got beef, you were paying 39 cents a pound. Sure. So we bought liver and the well, old kids. The rings we ate different too. Yeah. We had more money then. Yeah. I remember thinking, wow, 
we could have meat every night if we wanted to. And see how well that would reveal. Yeah. And then, then he gets out of the service and, oh, okay. Yay, <laughs> <laughs> and milk macaronis and stretch that with meals. Yeah, I remember those kind of meals that just like came out of the out of the food storage. They just came out of the pantry somewhere. I always remember the chicken noodle soup being made with fresh homemade noodles, egg noodles that would be made, and, and that was the you knew that was bacon day. That was hey, you walk in the door after school and you walk to you hit get pounded by the smell of fresh baked bread, and you knew oh, oh it's chicken noodle soup night because we have fresh rolls, My mom would do egg noodle pasta, and chicken noodle soup. Yeah, I could smell the bean, the bean soup and homemade rolls. Oh, wow. I love that smell. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> you loved it. You did it for us growing up, and I remember it too. I we come home from school, I'm like, oh man, there's fresh rolls. And we come home, and the second we do is we pull them rolls apart, and right there at the seam, Jab our finger in there and stick a tad of butter down in it, let it melt for a couple of minutes. And, oh, best round roll you ever eat, you know? <laughs> we ate more ground beef, stew meat, or roast. I still remember the staples. I mean, we still had ham bean soup all the time. That's the only time I remember eating pork at all. It was ham bean soup. Yeah. And it wasn't, it wasn't ham. No. We didn't have ham, it was ham hocks. So there was chunks That's of true. That's but we true. didn't eat, we didn't have a ham meal. Ham yeah. yeah. sure. and then have You're bean right. soup. No. You're right. No. And that's how we do it. Yeah. It's like, I'll have, if we have ham, we'll have ham, and we keep the bone and the broth and the yeah. scraps and the pieces. Yeah. But, that makes you, but yes. you could buy the ham hock. Yeah. Uh, right. Very intervention. Right. I remember sometimes I'd have to feed you kids chocolate milk warm chocolate milk and uh, a slice of toast with butter on it. Oh, we love that. That was your breakfast? Oh yeah, a little hot cocoa and buttered toast. Yeah. We'd always dip our toast in the hot cocoa. I don't know why we did it, but yeah. it was delicious. I can still remember the flavor in my mouth. Yeah, it was delicious. <laughs> Coming out of the reform school with that. Oh, they fed you probably pretty Oh, they fed you good. good. Yeah. Yeah. We raised our own meat, dairy products, we raised our own beef, we raised our pigs, we raised our chickens, and we had a big garden program, and so we ate good. It was not, you know, I mean, it wasn't, a, it wasn't as if we were relying on the pittance from the state. I'm surprised you would run away from there. Uh, Since you got to eat so well. Well, what you was sure the food? Oh, my. Yeah, what food? What was the food he was running from? <laughs> <laughs> and Harry told me that, that I would be there about six months. While well, they got made arrangements to. Well, six months came. And I didn't have a place to go to. And so I wrote a letter to Aunt Mary, and Aunt Mary said, well, we just don't have it. And I said, well, I'm not going to stick around here again. So I took off. And uh, so that added six months to my stay. And uh, it got me lock-up time for two weeks. And, uh, Lockup was not fun. <laughs> so at least you had some part of your life that you ate well. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Well, I I eaten well. As you can tell. Yeah, we have no problem eating now, do we? But uh, chewing me, that's a different. Yeah. Story. <laughs> I I have to have a bag a lot. <laughs> I had a great visit with my parents, and the conversation really made the work go a lot faster. It was fascinating for me to hear two slightly different stories from a very similar background from my parents that I normally wouldn't have in just regular conversation. There were many more stories told as our conversations went the rounds, but I was mostly fascinated by the fact that they were both raised with farm animals and large gardens. 
but on one hand, the kids weren't allowed to eat that food and were pretty destitute. On the other hand, the kids enjoyed the bounty of the garden as well. But to hear each of their perspectives about it was the most interesting. My dad remarked that he never felt like they were poor, it's just how it was. And to contrast that with my mom's comment of feeling like they were quite spoiled to have all of that access. It makes me grateful for the learning opportunities that they provided as I grew up. Spent the last few days just really trying to keep up. Everything else needs attention. Gardens need water and everything like that. But I had to manage dealing with that pig that we lost. We didn't lose any meat, which was good in that regard. But I spent three days unexpected trying to process all that meat and get it all finished. Last night I finished up all of the sausage bratwurst and, and liverwurst. I've never had liverwurst before, but it sounded like, I don't know, it sounded like it was worth a shot. <laughs> So we kept the liver and heart and I found a recipe of some, I believe it's a German style uh, liver worst. And then of course I tweak it a little bit for my own preference, but um, it's one-to-one -one ratio of liver and heart to pork shoulder, ground up. And then I there's white onion and a crisp apple, like a tart apple. Um, and then a few seasonings that all gets gets ground up and in some of the traditional methods I've seen that gets ground up and blended and pureed and then stuffed but I like my sausage to have some bite and texture so I just did a coarse grind initially on the meat and the apple and onion and then I mixed in the seasonings and flavorings as as needed and then ran it through a fine grinder to incorporate and still give it a little bit of body and texture. Um, then I stuffed that into, into natural casings last night. I just started up my charcoals and I'm getting them started and going. Once they're up to, up to burning good, I'll spread them out and throw some chips on. I've never done lunch meat. I've never done bacon. I've never done a pig. But all this is new trials. So we're going to do the hams. The hams are deboned and I've rubbed them down with salts and they've been curing for the last two days, as well as the bacon. Um, I'm gonna give all that a rinse, try to smoke all of that on here. Once they've cooled and, and settled after that, then I'm gonna try to slice them for some lunch meat. Rather than buying lunch meat, let's try making some. But I'm gonna get this going and we'll just see if we can get some bacon and some hams on the smoke. I'm in the fattest part of the bacon. I'm measuring 170 degrees. So that should be just fine for the bacon to come off and get cooling. The thinner parts looks like I'm well above that. 175, yeah, 175 easily. up to our 160 that we need to be. Let's check the hams. Smaller ham is at 148. About 149. And the thicker hams are definitely going to need some more time. They're at 128, so they're going to get there, but they're not there yet. So, a little bit more time on the hams. I'm going to pull the bacon off, set it in the meat to lug and get that in the fridge so that it can cool down and rest and cool down and then i'll rearrange the hams i'm also going to bring out some of the liverwurst and lay that on top there's a smoked variety that's what i'm going to go for i'm going to lay that up in here coil that on the top so that it'll take heat a lot quicker so 
Let's do that before we lose all of our heat and temperature. Okay, all the hams have come off and they're in cooling, so is the bacon. This is the liverwurst sausage and it's all come up to temp and got a good smoke and grill. So now I'm gonna lay those out to cool. much. Apple's a little bit masked by the smoke. Mm hmm But the onion. Yeah, I like that. This is a very like very traditional sausage. Like I love that. That tastes great to me. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, that's pretty tasty. They always say if you don't like the weather in Idaho, just wait 10 minutes. <laughs> 